everybody welcome back to my channel today i'm going to teach you how to make this diy dollar tree and free farmhouse and americana firecrackers um, we're going to use these paper pads from the dollar tree as well as some recycled toilet paper and paper towel tubes these are glue sticks like paper glue sticks you can get them at dollar tree i'm going to use just some scrap foam core you could use cardboard and then some choices of what you want to wrap it with there's silver papers there's the dollar tree papers there is bandanas or fabrics these are 97 cent fat quarters from walmart and these are an old pair of jeans so the first thing i'm going to show you up close and in real time is how to cut the tubes determine the size of them now i have seen these on pinterest made up with like pringles cans and um what are some other like the pirouette cookie cans basically tall cans which you could do as well this is just a way to recycle um, cardboard tubes. Now, um, the paper towel tube is four inches. I'm sorry, <laughs> the paper towel tube is 11 inches. The toilet paper tube is four inches. So I did some really quick math in my head and realized that I can make them four, five, and six inches. By taking five inches off of the paper towel tube, I'll be left with six inches. And then with the toilet, with the toilet paper tube being four inches, that worked out so perfectly. It was almost like divine intervention. So I'm just measuring and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure around a few spots so that I can get as even of a cut um, as possible. So I'm measuring on one side, marking it, rolling the, tulip, the toilet paper tube over a little bit, marking it again. And now I'm just going to connect those pencil lines with um, by cutting. You could draw the pencil lines together first if you're not as confident. Okay, but I'm just using the um, straight edge uh, craft knife that I got from the Dollar Tree. Okay, and I'm just slowly going around. Now, part of the end is going to stand, so I like to have the factory edge be on the bottom of the um, firecracker, but so that the top edge doesn't have, this cut doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm trying to say. And even if you do put them on the bottom, when you bundle the three of them together, they'll support each other, um, oddly enough. So it, it doesn't really make a difference, but that's just what I chose to do. Okay. And I'm just being very careful going around, cutting slowly. It's really important. That's why I'm showing this in real time. I don't want you to think like zip, 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 and I cut the thing in half. You also don't want to cut this with a scissor because you don't want to flatten your tubes. Um, and one thing that I learned, um, at, like as I was doing it was that I really wanted some support inside the tube so that Aline's cr three ounce bottle of craft glue that you can get from the Dollar Tree fits in this tube perfectly for stability and you'll see me use it in a few minutes um, but anything you can get like old vitamin bottles any medicine bottles that are around um, to put up there to support them you can also stuff it with newspaper if you want to um, if you're planning on putting these outside, you want to figure out some way to weight them down. So if you can find a bottle that f that does fit inside one of the tubes, then you can fill the bottle with sand or rocks and glue the bottle on the inside if you're going to use them outside. I have no intentions of putting them outside, um, which is why I didn't worry about the wind block and knocking them over or weighing them down. Okay. So now I've done is taking that piece of foam core, and this is just one option. This is with the paper ones. Um, what I've done is I've measured around to cut circles. Um, and again, that, that Elaine's bottle, tacky blue bottle, would have been perfect if I traced around it. Um, but this is just, you know, a preliminary circle. What we're going to do is we need to put something in the top of these tubes when we're going to cover them with paper to hold the, it's not a wick when it's firecracker, the fuse. <laughs> okay. Um, when we do the fabric ones, and I'll show you the technique for that, we don't need this when you cover it with fabric. So if you're going to cover it with fabric, you can go ahead and jump fast forward to that technique in a few minutes. But these ones we're going to cover with paper first, okay? So now I'm just cutting out the circle, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to trim, and I'm going to trim each one to fit each tube. Now I did show you when I butted the toilet paper up to the paper towel tube that they are the same width. And I feel like that's sort of... Of like a industry standard um, like they I feel like they're all almost the same I, I mean I'm sure that you might be off like a centimeter or two but I feel like they're all the same um, okay 
Um, the one thing I realized I just didn't show you in the things that you need is some jute. Um, the reason I didn't tell you that you need a jute is because there are other options for fuses. Um, I do like the jute because I do like the farmhouse look. Um, but you could do ribbon. You could do any um, silver twist ties that come with like goodie bags from the Dollar Tree would be really cute. Little pieces of the garland, any of those things would be really cute as well. So first I'm going to start with this wooden paper pad and it has red and white wood and then it has like a brown weathered wood and I was like first I was like should I do like red wood white wood and then denim paper and then I was like you know what no I have real denim I'm going to leave the denim for the fabric and I can do this it still has a red white and blue feel even though that there is no blue I know that sounds weird and to me anyway it looks weathered but I wanted to show you that there is an option where you could take watercolor paint over that brown wood and give it a blue hue. Um, in fact, I might, well, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> That's the thing. I didn't do that because I don't want that. I like the look of just the weathered um, wood look from the paper that you get. All right, and then what I'm doing is I'm cutting out a circle of the red. I'm gluing it to the top. I've taken a skewer, a toothpick or something, and I poked a hole in the top. And then I've tied a piece of the jute, I've fed a piece of the jute through, tied a knot on the inside, and then left it on the outside. And now I've folded over the top so that it fits just the length of the tube. And I'm just using regular glue stick, um, you know, paper glue stick to adhere it. All right? And it's really that simple. I did want to do this for you guys because I thought this was a great project for the kids to do with the kids. This is um, without the hot glue gun. You do use white glue. You can use Elmer's glue for this where I have the Elaine's tacky going around the edge of the topper um, to stick the topper in. So I wanted to show you that this is a not hot glue type of a situation. All right. And then this one I want to show you if you feel like if you feel the need to put a bottom in, I would go ahead and put a bottom in. If you have little, little kids that you want, they want to help, but you're not really sure how, you could put the top and the bottom in first and have them wrap the paper around it. Um, you can also have kids just paper, you know, glue the paper for you if you feel like you want to glue them. But I just think this is such a great craft to do with the kids. I showed you in the beginning that they have these great metallic papers from the Dollar Tree that actually have red, white, and blue in them or silver. <laughs> blue red and silver um, metallic papers which would be so charming these would be so cute that way um, that's why I showed you that in the beginning but I don't think I even talked about why <laughs> and now I'm just going to show you how um, I wanted the wood green to go all in the same direction that's just me being me that is not a necessity for you guys um, then you don't have to worry about doing that but when I did want the wood green to be in the same direction the paper is not wide enough to go around the whole tube um, I could have just rolled it the other way and it's fine because the paper is five by seven. Um, so it would have fit if I would have just rolled it the other way and had the, had the, um, stripes going up and down, the wood grain going up and down instead of around. But I just really wanted it to go around. That was just the aesthetic I was going for. So I'm showing you just how to piece the pages together, but you guys could figure that out. This paper is really cool, this white one, because it actually has like a continuous print. Like if I had cut, ripped all these pages out and lined them up in a big long row, there would be a continuous pattern on there, which is kind of really cool. In, in wallpapers, it's called the repeat. So it has a repeat on it, which is really cool. And I'm just repeating the same thing with the topper. Um, this one, I didn't do any different than the red. I just, the only thing that was different about this one is I added that extra strip of paper. So then you pull it through, tie a knot, figure out where you want it to be, and then glue on the inside. Okay. So for the last one, like I said, there is like a, a darker wood, but you see that there's actually two different color papers in there. And I think that's just a manufacturer's printing issue. I don't think that it was necessarily like two styles. Um, but this one doesn't have that repeating pattern. So I'm going to just butt two up and glue them first before I roll them onto the thing, just to make it a little easy. It sort of has like a repeating pattern, but it didn't line up perfectly. I don't know what it is about that dark wood one. <laughs> But I'm doing the same thing where I'm folding over the edge just to get a nice clean edge along the bottom and or top or whichever way you want to put it. Um, then I'm 
gluing the whole thing and wrapping it around the paper towel tube. Now this one, I'm just gonna do the top a little different. And this is an option for the top that I'll show you in a second. Um, and if you feel like your glue is not holding, you can always hold it with clothespins or um, you could use, um, oh my goodness, binder clips or something just to hold it while it's gluing. But it really did hold very well for me. So for this particular top, I'm cutting out a piece of paper wider than the piece of foam board that I cut. And I'm snipping up around the circle in towards the foam board, as you can see here. And this is already glued, so be mindful. Then you can glue around and I'm folding the pieces of paper over it. Um, I'm sorry it's I did it so fast. <laughs> this is actually in, this particular time is in real time. <laughs> um, but you can see how I did it around it just to show you another option of covering that white edge. And then I've done the same thing where I've poked the hole, stuck the string through. This is now in double time again. And um, put glue around the outside as well. And that's just another option. It just gives a little bit more finish if you're looking down on the top of the firecracker. If that's what you want, obviously you guys go for it. There are many different techniques to this. I mean, this is just one way I'm showing you how I did it. Now I've taken some more jute and I've wrapped the three of them together with jute. I know that if you like a look that's got more color then you can use any of the nice burlap ribbons would be nice. The burlap ribbon with the red white and blue stars on it like the 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 pretty one that they came out with last year I don't know if they saw it this year any of those would look really cute wrapped around here but I really did like the farmhouse look and I still like I said I do feel like it does still give me a red white and blue feel even though that they're that dark wood is not blue I don't know what it is I still get that Americana feel but that's just me you guys might not so now I've taken the jute and I've rubbed it through my fingers a few times to make it straight a little bit and then I've taken the top see that's how I've rubbed it through and it kind of straightens it out which is kind of cool cut it to the size you want it and then I frayed the tops to almost look like they're sparking a little bit and again this is just supposed to be very rustic uh very farmhousey not not very fancy not very glittery there's no glam here um okay and I've just taken the tops and I frayed them up and I think that looks super cute and here is the um basically the rustic farmhouse ones um, and now I'm going to show you the fabric ones now unfortunately and I'm so sorry about this I wasn't recording like I, I set the camera up and I didn't hit record so you missed the first half of the red one and the denim one but the process is the same for all of them and you'll see me finish the last one from start to finish which is good um, but basically um, what I've done is I've taken a piece of old jeans which were from Emily thank you Emily Actually, it wasn't. It was from Evan when I hemmed his pants. Thank you, Evan. This was a piece of my couch slip cover that I used. It's just kind of white with a red toile. And then the red and white check was from the 97 cent fat quarter from Walmart. Um, but these are all fabrics that I had had. That's why I said this one was free. And obviously, upcycling the paper towel tubes, those are free as well. So what I'm doing is I'm hemming an edge just like I did with the paper. And I'm running hot glue on a bead and making one finished edge. And then I'm gluing the finished edge down first. So what you want to do here is you want to roll the finished edge inside out towards the tube and you want to roll the finished edge up first and then the, cover it with the unfinished edge. Okay, and then I'm just going to glue the edge where they overlap together. Now, if you see here, I have the fabric a little lower than the glue because I'm going to tuck it under and give it like a nice finished seam, but you don't have to do that. You can just glue it right up to the tube. But what we're going to do is we're going to stick the jute down into the tube. We're going to gather up the top fabric and I'm going to pinch that jute in there and then wrap it with a rubber band. Then we're going to turn this tube inside out and we're going to put the cardboard back inside. Um, basically we're finishing this like we were sewing. This is like a no sew project. We're doing it with glue but we're still using the same principles of right sides wrong sides. Okay. So now I have the tube turned right side out and I'm trying to get the paper towel tube back in there. I, then you can see I pinched it. I pinched it so it wasn't perfectly circle and that was fine. It opens back up again. Whatever you need to do to get in there. Okay, and now I'm showing you how I'm folding the edge on the inside. But what I want to do first is I want to take that, um, make sure my fuse, I keep forgetting what to call it. My fuse comes out and is nice and even at the top. 
And then I'm going to run a bead glue on the inside and I'm going to fold this over to give it some more stability at the base. Just make sure that your fabric is even before you glue it down permanently. Okay. And now I want to go straighten this, um, the strings out on these two and I accidentally pulled the string out of the red one. So I'm just going to show you how to fix that. That's why I left it on here. I've taken my skewer again, the skewer I used to poke holes, and I've glued the very end with a tiny, tiny bit of glue. I glued the jute back to the end of the skewer just so until it was cooled off. And then I shoved the skewer back in the, the pleat of the fabric, basically where it came out of. The one thing I forgot to do with the fabric is I forgot to knot the top, and that's what I should have done. Um, but it's very easy, it goes right back in. And you can secure it with some glue if you want as well. All right, and now I'm gonna tuck the ends in on this. Um, when I realized when I didn't have it tucked in, then it was almost as tall as the um, tall red one, but we want them to be different each sizes. So I went ahead and I glued it on the inside. It also is gonna give it more stability since these don't have the circle holding them open. And just like we did with the last one, you want to straighten out the strings. You want to trim the strings the way you want it. I'm not fraying the tops of these. This is just going to be a tiny different look. But I am going to wrap it with some jute. And again, I could have used anything different. I could have used any ribbon. I could have used any burlap. Anything would have been cute to bunch them together. But I'm just going to stick with the jute. And that's really it. And I think they came out super cute. This one I feel is more true to the red, white, and blue. But um, the one, the farmhouse one, I just love. So here they are together. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry if it looked like it was super fast. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody who might be interested in trying one technique or both techniques. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And if you make these, share them with me on social media at Instagram on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, or you can email them to me at mrsgarthb2 at gmail.com. And as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!